Now, Fraser, the elephant in the room regarding spacecraft is the profound success of the James Webb Space Telescope. In my 35 plus years of being interested in space, uh, I've never seen anything quite so successful. What are you, what are your views? How do you feel about the JWST? Yeah, it it has been phenomenal. Um, and I think like like this was you know described as the elephant in the room. I mean, for the longest time, it was the monster that ate astronomy budgets. You know, it cost ten billion dollars. It was a decade late, and uh, other interesting projects got canceled because of the budget overruns, the time overruns on JWST. And yet it did launch. It launched now two years ago, more than two years, three years ago. Um, now I lost track of time because it was it was Christmas Day. Was it? Three years ago? Anyway, I'm sorry, to, I've lost, you know, we've done a whole year, two, maybe two, two years ago? Two years ago. Anyway, um, and... As you say, its impact on astronomy has been profound. On the cosmology side, that conversation is still unfolding. And I think we got that sort of initial run of results when people were still learning how to use JWST. We got these, we've seen the farthest galaxy that we've ever seen. Galaxies are bigger than anyone expected. We may have to rewrite our understanding of cosmology. And that has settled down. Like people have gotten a lot better at being able to both take the images with JWC, but also do the spectra analysis, which has been able to get a much more accurate idea of the redshift of these galaxies, figure out where they are in time, understand what they're made of, and things are, are moving back into the established models. And so I think cosmology has not been overturned in the way that some people were really hoping that it would be that in fact, the missing puzzle pieces are being found nicely and things are being slotted in and yet we're learning a tremendous amount about the early universe about the concentrations of gas I mean, the, and the results just keep coming out that larger supermassive black holes are being found that that the the results of some of the first like some like perhaps the chemicals that came from the first stars in the universe are being found seeding into nebulae and in stars that are forming in galaxies that we're seeing structures tidal tails tidal interactions building blocks of galaxies coming together spiral galaxies seen in earlier than anyone expected. Like there's a lot of really interesting things that are being found. But I think the more profound impact has been on exoplanets, that Webb was a better exoplanet hunter, or I guess, studier than analyzer than anyone had really let us know. And so while the the cosmological discoveries are great, and newly forming stars is really interesting. It has just been so good at studying the atmospheres of exoplanets in a way that there was no tool ever that was this good. And so we had a few hints of exoplanetary atmospheres with Spitzer and Herschel and other infrared telescopes. But Webb is just producing these beautiful spectra of the exo, you know, of exoplanet atmospheres showing the presence of methane and water vapor and oxygen and carbon dioxide and all of these chemicals, sulfur dioxide, all these chemicals in a way that, that it's just unambiguous that these things are there. And I think the, the exoplanet community has been so excited by the results. A, a lot of the interviews that I've been doing recently have been with people in this community, and they're just so stoked about what they're finding. And just to remind everybody, check out Fraser's channel and also Universe Today, his website, which is an excellent news source. Yeah, yeah. Like if you if you go back and look at the recent interviews on my YouTube channel, it's just this because <laughs> I'm really fascinated by studying exoplanetary atmospheres. Obviously, because this is how we find life, right? And and so that's been great. 